I think the major difference between technology companies and e-commerce companies is uh, technology companies primarily try to put a lot more focus into investing tech into technologies of tomorrow. Uh, e-commerce companies potentially do that on a lower scale than technology companies. But another episode of Engineering Archkal and today we have with us a very interesting guest uh, who is a software engineer at Mintra. Hi Salman. Thank you for having me here. You graduated um, with the CS engineering degree from NIT in Karnataka. Tell us about you know your experience at NIT and maybe some unique experience to your particular college. Uh, obviously when you uh, you know go to uh, places like NITK, uh, the experiences shape you to be the person that you are. And uh, I mean, I, I obviously had several ex uh, several uh, learnings throughout my four years over there. And uh, even when I'm, uh, you know, sort of now an alumni, I do try to contribute my bit over there. I think uh, with when it comes to unique experiences, uh, for me, it's always been, uh, you know, the kind of people that I meet over there and the kind of connections that I form. The major USP, which uh, a lot of folks do try to sell our college is our beach I guess so we do have a private beach over there and uh, I think that is something that usually attracts a lot of people. So Mintra is known to be a great place to work I think by the great place to work rankings and indeed um, tell us about three things in a company's work culture that young millennials should actually keep an eye out for. One is flexibility to work. I think in at least in today's scenario that's something which is very important. I think one of the reasons why it was easy for us to transfer to this home work from home scenario uh, was the fact that we always had these flexible timings and could take uh, work from home you know, by just putting out a, out a message in the morning saying, okay, okay, today I'm working from home. Uh, I think the second uh, thing that I would uh, typically recommend is uh, uh, try to find out what is the kind of tech that people are working uh, at the place you're looking for. So especially at Mintra, you know, there's a, a lot of exciting new tech that we're working with. Typically, th that sort of drives your own development and learnings. Uh, so for me, it's been quite a learning journey over the past one year, uh, you know, where uh, once I uh, had that campus to corporate shift, I think that's something that's very important. And thirdly, I think as a young engineer, uh, I would always recommend try to look out for the kind of mentorships that you would get at the places that you're looking to work at. Because at the stage of our career, uh, you know, once you're uh, very early in your career, I think it's very important to understand that uh, you at this stage really need to be mentored and guided on what are things to do. So, I mean, let's drive straight into what exactly your role is at Mintra and what you do on a day-to-day -day basis. Maybe the kind of tools that you use, the kind of skills uh, that you needed for your particular role. Typically, I work with backend development and uh, what uh, tends to happen is uh, uh, I majorly work on this uh, uh, technology called Golang. There is this concept of something called as a gateway and uh, we are the gateway team at Mintra, which typic, which uh, on a nominal basis deals with uh, the kind of uh, functionalities that go into the Mintra application and uh, sort of tying them down uh, with the mobile apps uh, that are there. So uh, for us on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, we uh, primarily work with either tooling. Uh, so we try to create different tools which uh, teams across Mintra can use. And uh, we work with the main gateway project, which is uh, our core implementation. If you are a third year or a final year student, it's more important to sort of understand and grab concepts. And uh, because the thing with technologies is these keep changing. So for example, uh, you know, a, a few years back, uh, there was this explosion of this technology called Ruby on Rails. Then something of the sort of Node.js came in. And now, you know, Golang is sort of going ahead. A um, few years down the line, you know, there might be something else. But what has not changed is the core fundamental concepts where, you know, once you have, let's say, this concept of a microservice architecture, which a lot of e-commerce companies use these days. Uh, so uh, that has still stuck on. And uh, uh, I think as a third year or final year student, uh, what I would typically recommend is, you know, pick up one technology, but try to implement it in the form of projects, in the form of internships. 
there are a lot of cs graduates who probably would want to work in more tech oriented companies like facebook and google and there would be others who would get into you know e-commerce giants like amazon and flipkart and others so taking a particular role um of let's say you know front end or back end development is there a sort of distinction to what you do um from tech companies versus e-commerce giants is it more like technology innovation and technology kind of takes a back seat Uh, in e-commerce or is it quite the opposite i think the major difference between technology companies and e-commerce companies is uh, technology companies primarily try to put a lot more focus into investing tech into technologies of tomorrow uh, e-commerce companies potentially do that on a lower scale than technology companies but other than that i think the major life cycles uh, that you undergo uh, through with a front end engineer or a back end engineer potentially remain the same uh, you know you have a product manager who gives you Uh, potential product tasks that you work with and uh, you know there are product tasks uh, there are uh, customer feedbacks that you take in so i think that cycle potentially remains the same the software development life cycle as we call it uh, what changes is potentially the company's investment uh, into core technology so for example companies like facebook google uh, you know uh, the recent trend has been these huge companies investing a huge amount in open source which is something that you might not see uh from eco uh, i mean that scale of investment is not something that you see so i think that scale of in- investment is the differentiator and again then there are obviously uh, you know they have teams which just w- work on those uh, work on innovating those technologies so i think that is uh, i would say the uh, core differentiator between the two uh, during your college time you were also part of gsoc google summer of code uh you know many students use gsoc as more like giving themselves a foot in the door for landing a good um interview to a, a great company um are there any particular um you know is there any particular advice that you have for people trying for gsoc and probably some things that you think they do wrong initially uh, one of the few mistakes that a lot of people do try to make uh is uh, uh you know sort of take gsoc as this competition that is there which it is definitely not uh what we need to understand from gsoc and the idea behind gsoc is uh it is your entry to uh, contributing to open source and uh, in the process uh, being part of a much wider community and a much wider network uh i think for me typically uh what gsoc has allowed me to do has is uh, reach people who you know i would uh, i would normally not have the opportunity to reach and uh, uh, gain that knowledge from them what i would uh, recommend is try to look at uh, open source as not just a two month internship or for example, for that matter google summer of code not just as a two month internship but as a long term opportunity that you will have which keeps incrementally adding to your resume and your uh you know your uh, level of skills so you did a lot of summer internships as well so if you had to create like a you know like a hypothetical road map of how somebody in as a cs engineer should um spend their summer months all throughout the three summer months that we get uh what would you you know advise people to do and what is it that you did and why did you do what you did so uh, at the end of your second year uh, there are typically two career paths which a lot of people take one is uh, you know go to a iit or iisc and go for a research internship which is not something which i did uh and the second one is apply to a startup uh, you know uh, preferably a startup with less than 20 people or 30 people and get a hang of things and try to work with as many things as possible so which is something which i did so uh, this particular startup was majorly aimed at the rural uh india market where uh, you know they made people uh, basically their idea was to make people aware of various schemes the government schemes that are there so i worked on uh, right mm-hmm. from android to developing a management information system for them in your third year summer i think uh, a lot of uh, folks do have on campus slash off campus where they apply for so if you're planning to go for a corporate uh, or if you're planning to do a internship in the industry uh, definitely do look out for a corporate because uh, that will give you the question of a ppo uh, you know that particular place might offer you a replacement offer or things of that sort and uh, you will also understand how the corporate setup in in, in its entirety works and uh, let's say if you are going for research try to apply to all these uh, foreign research programs try to understand how research is done abroad uh, which is uh, from what i've talked to a lot of people is quite different from 
what we do here back in india i see i'm sure like the viewers would have a lot to take back from this thank you so much arman thank you for your time thank you thank you for having me